everyone. I'm Maximilian, and this is episode two of how you can dominate Black Ops using the Stakeout. So we're going to start this off with a uh, ground war game on Stadium, and there's a lot of folks that really hate a lot of the maps from the map pack, but to be honest, I kind of like Stadium. I think it's a fun map, well, at least I like half the map. There's another half of this map that I really don't enjoy, and I seem to never do good on. But seeing that this is going to be a run-and-gun game, my three perks I'm running right now are Hardline, with Sleight of Hand, and Marathon. Marathon's absolutely necessary. Uh, you take the risk of running into claymores, and you just have to hope that guys aren't running that stuff. But if you notice what I'm doing right here, B has a huge disadvantage because it's located right off the middle of that, that plank there. And I'm trying to stop all these guys from getting into C, but there's a little bit of lag as each of my shots miss. I begin to compensate later in this game by understanding how much you need to lead the enemy, because this weapon can be good, but at the same time it is it, it's an intermediate weapon. The spaz, I would say, is the is the easier to jump into gun. Like anyone can use the spaz and just hose down shots and rock guys. While on this one, you kinda have to be conservative about, about your ammunition and you have to be conservative of where the enemies are depending on the lag because as I would tell my friends this is a three to four bar gun and that means if the connection is underneath anything of three or four bars which you would hope it's not you would not want to use this weapon as I get totally caught in a brutal crossfire but live and learn keep running that is the that is the overall motto of this class that I could that I could give you guys is to never stop moving if you're the mobile monster it's hard for them to track you down and to keep going after you because you're always in different places and especially when you have a shotgun like this which has the best range of any shotgun out there and it has probably the highest damage ratio of being up close I think um, I think maybe the HS10 or the the last shotgun you get whatever it's called uh, is not bad either, but as you see in here, if you're mobile, you can you can get the flank on guys like crazy. Ooh, lucky knife miss, and that guy hits it in the head pretty hard. So, like I was saying about hanging out on a certain side of the map, this side of the map is what I'm talking about. There's a lot more corners and there's a lot more areas for you to be sneaky as far as uh, as far as like, flanking up on guys and running into a clown car, which I like to. That's a metaphor for running up into a lot of guys jammed into one area and they don't know what to do. Um, go out to the open area and totally get shot. So, take my own advice. I should probably stick to the corridors. And like I was saying earlier, there's no corridors really on the opposite side. There's that. There's that. There's that second story area, which has you know leading out into the planks on the outside. But the the ice rink is practically useless. It's almost a part of the map that you would never see. Uh, there's no action there. But uh, the biggest thing you want to look for <laughs> with this gun and running this class is those beautiful red dots. I see more than one red dot, and I'm just like, ooh, I'm going to get him. Uh, and I try to pull something brutally dramatic and only end up killing myself because a lot of dudes will run flak jacket in round war domination. It's something you just kind of have to be ready for, and chucking grenades at, at points just doesn't work. But doing stuff like this and keeping yourself constantly mobile leaves the enemy just kind of clueless as far as what's going on. They start like nerd raging to no end if I, this golden freaking shotgun guy has killed me seven times and they start panicking moving directions and not running in packs which is what normally gets you a victory. Running in teams, dealing with dealing with spoke, uh, choke points and spawn points, you don't have to worry about oh my god those guys ate it pretty hard. That's the kind of stuff I love. I love running into a room or running into an area and just clearing it out full of guys. And if you've ever watched some of Sandy Ravage's videos, they are some of the most entertaining things out there for the Call of Duty game. And I take him as an example because this running these classes is a lot of fun. But the saddest part is that one of the most enjoyable weapons in all of the Call of Duty franchise was the Spaz-12 in Modern Warfare 2, and there's really no equivalent in this game. That gun was just totally awesome. You, you take what you can get, and you just this, this weapon is the closest thing you can try to mimicking that gun and, and playing a run-and-gun play style with a shotgun. Um, but sticking to this side of the map, uh, SR-71 is up, so there's not. <laughs> it's a pretty unlikely, ch uh, pretty unlikely that I'm gonna die here, and especially with this gun. And the, one of the things you got to learn immediately is the distance, like how far do you have to shoot? Because, like I said right here, that shot totally whiffs that guy. 
uh, be it because of the lag or a little bit of delay or me just missing a shot. It's totally possible. That's what happened. And, ooh, double kill with an RPG. Uh, I love RPGs as a secondary for a shotgun class, and yikes. Oh, there goes those guys. Follow the dogs to victory. That's what I say. Those dogs will lead you to enemies no matter if they have ghosts or not. So if there's a dog in front of you, there's a good chance the dude's aiming down at the dog first. Just follow them, even if they're not yours. Um, RPGs is a great secondary. For, for maps like this where points like B have a lot of disadvantage regarding uh, verticality. There's a lot of vertical areas in this map, in fact three really big ones that, that can just eat it hard and they get such an advantage point as far as the, uh, the B location. And it's really easy to just to throw an RPG out because it doesn't matter how accurate it is, it has the biggest splash damage of any, of any, uh, of any explosive in the game right now. And, ah, RC cars are the death of me. Those things, I can never escape them. And they seem to be, I seem to be an RC car magnet. I don't get it either. Maybe you guys feel the same. But I'm on this other side of the map right now because we have, because the enemy has B at the moment. And if we are able to get them out of this side, I want them to have A again. A is, A is where you can spawn lock the holy hell out of an opposing team on this specific map. So let's rush in. There's a lot of red dots, and let's do this. I'm expecting there to be a guy up here, but I don't think there is. But there usually is. And keeping mobile around the middle of the map, I wouldn't say is the smartest thing, but what these guys want to do at the moment is cap. And if they're capping, their focus is on running towards a certain spot. I like, I like making order out of chaos from the previous vid. The, the element of chaos in Ground War is really apparent. Because people try to figure out what's going on, they try to figure out where to go and what to do. And oh my gosh, hello clown car. Uh, let's see if, where the heck that other guy go? There he is. And anyone else? Anyone else? Oh, I get put down by that dude. So, let's keep it rolling here. I have, uh, I have other shotgun classes at the same time that I like to use while this chopper gunner goes on. But... This one is a lot of fun. I'd argue this is the most satisfying shotgun in the game. The Olympia, I think, is the most inconsistent POS probably in this game. You just shoot a guy and this huge pillar of flame exits the front of the gun and doesn't kill anyone. But I like I like this weapon a lot. The stakeout is a lot is a lot of fun and it looks awesome when it's gold. I mean, am I right? It looks cool. There's not a lot of gold weapons that look really cool in this game. Like I, like I was also saying earlier, the spaz is a fun weapon, but it will take multiple bursts and you will run out of ammunition rather quickly. And uh, one thing to note on a chopper gunner on this on this map, it sucks. It's not good. As you can see, I've, I think I might have gotten maybe six, seven kills at the moment. It's because all the all the parts where you move in are inside and that, that doesn't work. So that's going to finish up the first part of this How to Dominate episode for Black Ops uh, using the stakeout. The next one is going to be a different map, same gun, same loadout, but the next one is going to be a bit different. It's going to be me specifically using the stakeout with no kill streaks that actually kill anyone, only assisting kill streaks. So I'm pretty sure it's just spy plane, counter spy plane, and Blackbird. If you want, check it up on vidthrough.com. The video should be up right now. Thanks everyone. Take care.